uh, with the uh, hip, but perhaps that's okay. I mean, that's good enough so far. And nothing else is breaking, so I think we have a good uh, rig so far. Drag the spine into the layout node so that when we move the layout node, everything else moves. Good. Uh, and I guess we'll start um, with the arms. So again, we have another part of the skeleton which we can control. Would you really want to move the top spine? I'm not sure, but just in case. It's going to create another circle duplicated from the bottom one. Uh, freeze transformations. S uh, make sure that this is selected with the, uh, what is it, the spine B, and just do another orient constraint. Okay, now when I rotate the um, bottom spine, the top spine doesn't move with it, or rather it doesn't uh, keep to the uh, same relative orientation as this one. This may or may not be a good thing. I mean, the power of having them both um, not constrained or parented in any way is that perhaps I really want Rise to be looking up and only the back of the spine is um, only for specific animations. Uh, I don't know. You, If you want it, you can keep it. Um, otherwise, if you want to say have um, everything staying in the relatively same orientation, you can uh, select your uh, bottom spine bone the top spine bone, and do a uh, hmm. an orient constraint. Perhaps not an orient constraint. Uh, this might need a parent, or yeah, a parent will do. Take the uh, spine which you made, uh, the first spine and the second spine. Drag the second spine into the first spine to create a parent-child uh, relationship. And now when you rotate the uh, the bottom spine, the top sp uh, spine will move with it. Again, I don't know um, exactly um, what you like want to animate. Uh, this is part of the question of um, how to work a character. Like, do you want a lot of um, minute control or do you want everything to move hierarchically? Um, in the case where um, it wasn't hierarchically aligned, this means that you could rotate the bottom spine and then the top spine uh, differently. Again, I don't know uh, what animations you're gonna make, so I'm just gonna I just show you do both. Uh, so let's keep going. We have the spine uh, rigged up. We have the neck now, uh, and we're just gonna create another circle. And just align it to the point. Scale it up a little bit. Freeze transformations. And I'm just going to do another orient constraint on the neck. Okay, that's good. And finally, we have the head bone. And for this, I'm going to show you um, a constraint which I didn't show you in the first part of my tutorial, which is the aim constraint. Uh, in this case, since there's only uh, one head bone, and like uh, since Bryce is bald, he doesn't have any hair, which I have to worry about, uh, what you would want to do is you want to create yet another circle and align it with the um, eyes as best as you can. 
gonna rotate a little a little bit. Scale it. Trying to be precise as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but Just something okay. Uh, this circle I made will be what the head will be aiming towards. So I'm going to select, uh, just gonna name that neck, or rather, uh, the neck. Drag it into my uh, layout node. Drag this into my layout node as um, look select uh, will modify freeze transformations uh, select the head joint and do a aim constraint now when I move this the uh, head uh, attempts to rotate to always look at um, the uh, your control here. Uh, perhaps you don't want a circle to represent a look, perhaps you want an arrow, uh, but um, at the moment this will work. So let's try everything again. Uh, move down the hip. Uh, these need uh, point constraints on the hip. Okay. And now the look doesn't move with the uh, hip. Again, this is another um, one of those things which you have to think about whether or not you want um, this look to be constrained with the hip or any other part. Uh, it's up to you. Um, perhaps uh, you have a specific animation where you want rise to be looking at a very specific direction all the time, uh, where you don't want to, like, say, move this and have to animate. Um, uh, like counter animate the look like perhaps let me just show you where I have the look as a uh, child of the hip where the hip will move down and uh, rotate now if you have uh, animation in mind where uh, rise is looking in a very specific direction all the time this may not be um, ideal, in that every time you move down the hip, um, you'd have to reanimate the um, look to be somewhere else, rather than um, always having the look at a certain direction. Although at the same time, perhaps uh, you want Rise to always look forward, where you would want the look to be um, a child of the uh, of the hip or whatever uh, node which controls the majority of your skeleton, of your rig. Right, so... Uh, okay, uh, we have a good part of um, the body rigged. Let's go on to the shoulders. Uh, again here, there are so many ways in order to do this. Um, you may want to have um, movement on the shoulders to like say, flex the shoulder. Uh, again, create another circle or whatever shape you want. Move it up. Uh, to the shoulder, rotate it, um, I don't know, 
45 degrees. Uh, wrong direction, actually. Negative 45 degrees. And scale it down. Now we have control for the shoulder. Modify freeze transformations. And we're just going to do a orange constraint on the shoulder. All right, good stuff. Okay, now we um, come into a trouble area, which is the rest of the arm. Uh, unlike uh, the legs, which um, have an anchor point, the ground, uh, by which it's useful to have um, inverse kinematics, and in that you want the foot to always stay with the ground. The um, the arms aren't quite as uh, clear cut. Uh, if you use a forward kinematics um, type uh, build, uh, you would have to animate each part of the uh, bone separately, like in the toes that I showed in um, the uh, beginning of the tutorial. It may or may not um, be as difficult, but it's one of those things you have to uh, weigh whether or not inverse kinematics or forward kinematics will be better. Because one thing about uh, inverse kinematics is that while uh, you get um, free animation uh, from the starting joint to the uh, ending joint, you run into problems with um, getting uh, like your orientation uh, specifically correctly and you run into problems of animating in that maybe you want to have um, overlap uh, on the arm, which uh, becomes very difficult uh, using a pole vector. Uh, again, uh, I'm not going to say um, how you should do it. You have to think about what you're animating, how you're animating it, uh, and uh, generally just what, what, you, what you want the um, character to do. I'm just going to show you, um, in, this, in this case, um, all the ways I could do it. Uh, left shoulder. Drag that into rise. And uh, again, do some double checks, make sure that everything's moving correctly. Uh, point constraint. Point constraint on the shoulder. 